New Radio Sports Network.com, joined by head coach of the Gibraltar Vikings, Mike Peck, after Gibraltar Falls 50 to 34. And coach, uh, you played tough here tonight, and it was, at the end, I feel the tackles were being made. It was just, it seemed like they were getting their yardage just before you guys could get some uh, people on them. Yeah, I think, uh, um, I'm going to be honest with you, we weren't surprised by any of the plays they ran, but uh, definitely, definitely they're getting too many yards. I think, you know, we want to try and hold them to three or less, and they were getting five to six, and that, that kind of did us in when they could move the chains and move the chains and move the chains. You know, we we're always within two scores there in the second half, so the game was never out of reach. But unfortunately, we just couldn't get the stop that we needed to kind of get the ball to swing the other way. You know, we had two onside kicks that were close, but close doesn't good enough right now, so we got to just get a little bit better. And when you take a look at uh, you know, you were able to move the ball. It was just that there was just a couple of drives that stalled out. But, I mean, Luke Steves, once again, had a great game offensively, was able to do it with his arm and his feet tonight. Yeah, Luke, Luke was amazing. Um, he, he was he was doing everything in his power to try and win that game on his own. But unfortunately, you know, football's a team game, and we need to have a couple more kids join him this next week so we can get on the right side in the victory column. Now, it looked like he was moving a little bit limpy at the end there. Is everything right with him? Yeah, that, that's Luke. That's, just, that's our indication that we know he's tired and, and he just needs a break and he's ready to come out of the game once he starts with that little limp. Uh, he had one at the end of the... Oakfield last week too, so it's kind of just the thing we started to notice when he gives us that. We know we got to give him a break or we get him a longer rest than maybe one or two plays. So unfortunately, with our few our low numbers, he's got to play a lot more plays than we'd like. And defensively, I think the one thing that really stuck out to me was that you had a really good feeling on timing. You really pressured Anthony Jenner John all night long to the point where. I really don't think they tried very hard to, to pass the ball at night. What did you see in their the, in their offensive front? They allowed you to time out some of those plays. Uh, we we knew um, with their three down linemen and, and the way their alignment was that uh, there was a couple free lanes if we could guess the right side. But unfortunately, a couple times we guessed wrong, and those have come some of them seven, eight, nine yard runs when we got our our linebacker was kind of blitzing the wrong side. I mean, but that's the the chance you take when you send a blitz. Well, very good. And next week, Screaming Eagles come in and uh, 5 o'clock game. We'll have it right here on 105 on the GOAT. Um, taking a look at maybe an early look at that one. What's got you excited for that one? I'm going to be honest, Tim. I haven't watched any film. Uh, the most excitement is that we get to start at 5 o'clock, so we hopefully stay in the warm weather. There you go. As If you're tuning in on Facebook Live right now, you notice it's, there's no earthquake. We're just cold here at Institute. Coach, thank you so much for joining us on the post-game show, and good luck here in planning for Shaquamagon. Thanks, Tim. We'll have the game for you on 105-1 to go. It's once again the final score, 50-34. to We'll try to get you some Sturge of A quality entertainment as well on the new Radio Sports Network.